Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Very well, Suki. How are you? I'm good. Congratulations on Empower and the Thank Google you. list as well. Well done. Thank you so much. That's amazing news. Thank you. I mean, I know lots about you because I've known you for ages, but actually, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your career and journey to date for the people? Sure, that sure. Where do I start? So my career journey started with my first degree. I'm going to go all the way back. Started with my uh, first degree in engineering, geology and geotechnics from University of Portsmouth. Um, I then took a job working as a graduate engineer at, as a small, at a small firm in London. I was very fortunate to get a job straight out of university. Um, and as a graduate, I spent a lot of my time traveling around construction sites across the UK, working on various development projects as, as a graduate engineer. Um, after a number of years, I then moved home and I went to work for a civil engineering consultancy who then merged with a larger engineering company and I moved on uh, to work for them. At that point, I was, I was a principal engineer and then I was headhunted and I took a role as associate director of one of the largest engineering companies in the country at the time. Uh, and I was there for a number of years. And then in 2009, I decided to take the leap of faith and um, formed Jomas and Jomas was born December 2009. And we've been trading for 12 years to, to where we are now. So it's been an incredible journey. Um, but yes, that's essentially started from Portsmouth to where I am now as, as managing director of Jomas. Okay, so let's let's talk about, so who is your role model and why, be it professional, mentor or personal? Right, so I've come across so many people during my journey who have given me the confidence to be where I am today and to be who I am. But my ultimate role model is my mother. Um, she is an incredible woman. She's steadfast in all her endeavors. She's extremely hardworking. She taught me to pursue my dreams without fear of failure. Um, you know, some of the things that my mother said to me 20 years ago felt impossible. And now we, we sit down and, and look back and I just think, goodness me, you know, you had so much belief in me. So she's my ultimate role model. She does everything with, with love and purpose and, and drive. And yeah, she's just taught me everything that I am, so. Right, so what did you want to be when you grew up? Interesting, okay. Totally, totally different to what I am today, I must confess. So when I was younger, um, uh, as, as many, many children with, with African parents, I wanted to become a doctor um, and, and study medicine. But considering the fact that I, I get queasy at the sight of blood and un uneasy when somebody's ill. Um, obviously being going into medicine certainly wasn't for me. And I remember when I was sort of considering what to study at university and sitting with my mother again, she sort of said, why don't you do geology? It's totally out of this world. You know, why don't you do geology? And I, I started to look into geology, um, but then wanting something that, um, you know, sort of, I, I could use my, my love for numbers, my love for the outdoors, which is why mum suggested geology um, and, and sort of my love for maths. I went for engineering geology because it combines the two. So again, yeah. sorry, my mother would, would come up, comes up quite a lot because um, she sort of influenced a lot of my decisions. But yes, I wanted to become a doctor, but I've gone totally the other way. I'm now an engineering geologist. No, fantastic. So what's your um, biggest regret in your career? and then follow that with your biggest achievement. Okay. I, I hope this doesn't sound cliche, but I don't have regrets. I think every encounter, every decision and subsequent outcome, I've learned from it. It's been part of my process, part of my journey. So I don't regret anything because I don't think, you know, I've made certain mistakes, um, but I've learned from it and I've moved on from that. And if I hadn't made those mistakes, I probably wouldn't have learned. So I don't have regrets. So I don't live with regrets. Um, in terms of my, in, in terms of my um, career achievements, there, there's so many of them. But the biggest one for me, um, if I'm brutally honest, is is Jomas and the fact that I, I've taken it from my dining table to be one of the most respected engineering companies serving the, the construction industry. For me, that is that is big, that is a big achievement. Um, and you know, I, I have plans to grow it further. That, that's been, it's been an incredible journey for me, but also being 
receiving the presidential invitation to the uh, ICE uh, Institution of Civil Engineers. That was big, that was in 2019. And then last year, um, receiving the fellowship for, for the Royal Institute of, of British Architects. That was big as well. So there's been lots of lots of things that have happened through my career journey that I just couldn't have envisaged happening. And sometimes I pinch myself thinking, is this really happening? But yes, there have been lots of lots of opportunities. Congratulations, Ronnie. And it you shouldn't pinch yourself, it's all down to hard work, determination. I know what it's like as a fellow entrepreneur, like we work our asses off. I, oh, know, like, yeah. I swear, we work our socks <laughs> off. To get it to, to do what we do. So congratulations. Thank Wish you. you all the success in the world. Thank okay, you. in a short sentence, what would you tell your 18-year-old self if they could see you now? Oh God, be your authentic self. It's okay to be different. Um, I could talk about this forever, but um, some of the challenges I faced. I know you want one sentence, sorry, I'm gonna go back to one sentence. So just be your authentic self. It's okay to be different, be confident, be bold, be yourself. Anything is possible. That's that's certainly what I tell myself. Fabulous it. message. Okay, so what challenges have you faced within a work setting? Because obviously you've had different stages of your career where you've been an employee to being um, an entrepreneur. Talk to us about some of the challenges you may have faced. I work in the construction industry. <laughs> a sector where only 12% of the workforce is female and a very tiny percent is, is black. So at every stage of my, of my journey, there have been challenges at, at, every, at every stage from, you know, walking into site at the start of, at the start of my career um, and, and sort of trying to, to get the, 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 the people on site to listen and, and um, conform to the requirements as, as being the engineer on site. And, and that was sort of early stage, stage straight out of university and building that confidence um, to be able to get people to, to conform to, to what was required. Um, that, that, was, that was interesting and that was tricky. And then moving up the ladder to becoming an associate director of a large engineering firm and, and standing out every time, you know, lots, lots of challenges in that regard in terms of fitting in. But ultimately, you know, I'm one of those who, I put my best foot forward and, you know, I, I try as much as possible to focus on what I'm there to deliver. Um, and that once you're focusing on that, you forget those sort of niggling thoughts at the back of your mind that may pull you back. So being lots of challenges every step of the way. And, you know, now I'm opportune to be where I am. Um, and, you know, again, my, my strategy now is, is to bring others along with me so that, you know, in the future, there'll be others who don't have to go through that challenge of, of desperately trying to fit in in the construction industry. And Ronnie, like, as you say, being that person that stood out or being different, being either the only black person in the room or the only black woman in the room, do you think that's also helped your being different and almost leading with the diversity in your industry? Oh, it certainly helps me now. Yeah. It absolutely helps me now. Um, because I've I've got to where I've got to, and I realise the opportunity that I have to bring others along, and that you know the opportunity to be that change maker is is fantastic. So I love being in the position I am. But as my 21 year old self, straight out of university, it wasn't as easy as that because there wasn't yeah. there weren't those people to look you know ahead of you who looked anything like you, and every time you walked into a room, you looked that little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's 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 the mindset that you have to work with. To, to focus on what you're there to deliver rather than the fact that you are different. Totally. And I love what you said about how you led with, first of all, doing a really good job. Yeah. To demonstrate, you know, that you are talented, not less than leading with diversity. Um, which yeah, is precisely. I mean, I've got more letters after my name than my name itself because I've gone after every qualification, every accreditation possible, um, because I, it's not proving to others, but it's proving to myself that I am the best at what I do, so that when you walk into that room, you walk into that room with confidence. I've heard lots of people ask, I mean, lots of people ask me the question, you know, do you work harder because you're black? Do you work harder because you're a woman? I work harder, I work really hard because I want to be successful, and that's my focus. Absolutely, here, here. Um, Do you think that there are any inclusion-related challenges that are unique to your industry? And you slightly touched on it just before. I think, 
in the construction industry, I mean, it's a male dominated environment. I mean, I'm an engineer, there are not many women. I mean, it's, it's, we do, we are seeing increasing numbers of women. We're seeing an increasing number of, of people from sort of diverse backgrounds in our industry. But those, those are the challenges, I suppose, is, is that the fact that, you know, you're alone in that room, predominantly you're alone in that room. Um, and it's just, within organizations it's important to to have policies and to have procedures in place that makes everybody irrespective of who you are to make everybody feel a part of of, of the team and i think with the construction industry because it's been male dominated for so many years we've just got they've just got used to the status quo yeah and that, that's changing that is changing because yeah i mean they, they already have a huge challenge with gender right so Gender is a huge challenge to begin, particularly at the top, but also race is woeful. So a lot to do. Um, and we kind of touched on this earlier as well, but how do you think your lived experience has helped you in the industry that you work in today? So I grew up with uh, four brothers. I'm the youngest of five children. Oh, you're um, the baby. So I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> I'm the baby of the family, so you can imagine having four older brothers and the lessons that I learned growing up have, you know, totally prepared me for working in my construction industry, actually. I think the industry is slightly better than my brothers. Sorry, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think my my growing up um, and and just being around my brothers and being in the family environment that I was in prepared me for just speaking up, you know, being my authentic self um, and just going for what I wanted, really. I, I think that what you've, within my family environment, if you didn't go for what you wanted, then, you know, you're the youngest, you're the girl. Um, so I've, I've always had that approach. And I think that's really helped me in my, through my career journey also to just go for what I want. Yeah, fantastic. Um, what is the one thing leaders can do to help advance inclusion in the construction industry? Right. I, I mean, just thinking about me and what I'm doing as a leader, I'm an introvert. I'm that sort of person who can sit at home with my pajamas behind my screen um, and not go out for days. In fact, I didn't struggle I with it. I've said that about you at all. Like, <laughs> absolutely. precisely. You know, my family know that I'm. I'm literally that person. I. I just. Yeah, I'm an introvert. However, what I found, you know, and and actually, up until five years ago, 2017, to be precise. I didn't have photographs on social media. I didn't do social media. If you go back on my social media, you'd find there were no posts five years ago. Um, I didn't do social media. I didn't have photographs on LinkedIn or on, on any of those social media platforms. And what I realized actually as, my, as I progressed with my career was that I had this incredible opportunity to put my face out there and be a role model onto others. Because one of the reasons that I probably didn't have that, that photograph out there was because I felt that possibly I might be judged for, being who I was. So all I focused on was on my work and delivering a good service. And my service spoke for me and I had return clients and my, my, my business grew. Um, but what I found was that the reason that I was probably doing that was because I couldn't see anybody else ahead of me who looked anything like me. And here was I again, hiding behind the scenes, I divined, you know, a name that could be perceived as, as a man, you know. So I felt that it was important for me to put that photograph out there, to put myself out there, despite my, my personal preferences in terms of hiding behind the scenes, but put myself out there so that I can be that person that people can see and they can aspire to become. So I think in terms of leaders out there who are achieving greatly, it's important that even if you don't want to, that you do it for others and that you put yourself out there. You talk about what you're achieving, not in a sort of boasting um, way, but more in a way to inspire others. And what I've realized in the past five years and the messages that I've received and girls have gone off to study engineering because they've seen something I've said or they've stuck with a degree because they see what is possible. It just makes a huge difference. And I think it's been, it's been been worth it for me stepping out there and being the face of my business and being the face of what I'm doing 
So I will ask that leaders out there do the same because then yeah. you empower others um, as possible. Well, I mean, this leads on very nicely to the next question, which is around, we often reflect on how you can't be what you can't see. Yeah. So it, it clearly resonates with you because you've just spoken about it, but is there anything more that you would add about um, how this should, this should resonate with the people watching? I think the fact that, that I've been told numerous times that I'm the only black woman who runs an engineering company in the, in the country the size of my company. I think the fact that I'm the only one doesn't mean that I'm the only one that's able to. It just means that there might be others who are maybe hiding behind the scenes or feel that they're unable to achieve that because there isn't somebody out there. So I, I, I do strongly believe that you might have one that gets through, but generally it's very difficult to aspire to become something when there's nobody else out there who looks anything like you, who's doing what you want to, you know, who is where you would like to be. So it is important that we have role models who look like our country looks um, so that the, the, the future generations have somebody to aspire to be. But I, I do strongly believe that for a, a lot of people, not seeing somebody who looks like them holds them back. However, the flip side to that is I didn't see anybody who looks like me and I pursued my dreams. I was lucky to have my family support, but I pursued my dreams. So it also shows that you can be what you yeah. can't see um, because you can be the first, not the last because then you pull others with you, but you can be the first. So yeah. the saying is there and it does affect a lot of us but I also demonstrate that you can be what you can't see. You can be the first. Absolutely. You're smashing so many glass ceilings and we all adore you here in Empower and Involve. Congratulations once again on the Empower list. Congratulations on making the Google top 10 list as well. We thank you. love you. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Suki. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.